So this is my LB Media. It's not uh, LB Auger. I'm trying not to touch this tip anywhere because I don't want to contaminate my media. Um, what I'm doing here is I just need to put in five milliliters into each tube and let it incubate overnight. Okay, so there's five and whoop, a little out of practice with this. Okay, there's one. It's five milliliters plus or minus half a mil, really. We should add some antibiotic to this. And the only thing that's going to grow is our plasmid. I didn't make a crucial mistake, but I'm pretty confident that this will be sterile and that the only thing in there will be my samples. But just to be certain, we're going to put some some antibiotic in that media, slosh it around, and then finish with the rest of them. Let's wash that around a little bit. Now let's finish with these guys. Okay, so now we have our plasma preps, um, or our grow outs from our uh, samples that we did last night. These are colonies that I was picking recall with the, with the tips and I stuck them in LB broth. Um, let them incubate overnight in the shaker. In particular that shaker right behind me, that green one, at 37 degrees, 250 RPMs all night long. So now, if you look at this, it's very cloudy. I can, just shaking, I can see a lot of cellular debris in there. So what we're going to do is we need to make plasma preps for each one of these. And the first thing to do is to make is first get 1.7 mil tubes. We're going to pour it out just a little bit here. We're going to co effectively concentrate this bacteria. The key, what we want to do is to get above 150, around 150 nanograms per microliter final yield. So we just need to get enough bacteria in our tubes to uh, provide that as a, as a plasma prep. Now we've got out tubes, we've labeled them and they, with the same labels as the plasma preps and we're essentially loading in some of the plasma preps in the tube. And what we're doing, there are multiple ways of doing it, this is just the way I do it. I'm, it's not particularly, it's not really mentioned in the manual, but uh, I'm just giving this a good shake. These have been sitting for a little while, waiting for me to get to this. I'm pouring some solution into the, into the tube and just closing the tube. Now we're going to spin it at full speed to collect the bacteria down at the bottom. For, we'll spin for a minute. And that's the first time. And then we're going to repeat the step. And pour, we're going to fill up the tube once more and get all the bacteria we can down at the bottom. Again, key is just to get enough bacteria that we have uh, sufficient plasmids for our uh, plasma prep process. You guys by now know how to use this centrifuge. Now the only potential pickup for this is you do not want to fill your, be too greedy and fill up your tubes all the way up to the brim or past. You'll notice that mine have, if you can see it here, where that mark is, there's still a small volume up there. The reason I leave that there, even though I'm trying to get as many bacteria as I possibly can in the tube, is that it'll spill and all that bacteria will leak and essentially that's what some of this garbage is around the side of the centrifuge. Again, it's important to have things balanced in the centrifuge. The reason is obvious, I think, so the rotor doesn't wobble while it's spinning at high speeds. And I'm screwing this in by the top knob. Make sure it's on good. Okay, and then we're going to spin for one minute. Okay, so now we're going to get, this time we're going to be a little more judicious in how we get rid of the supernatant. We're going to remove all we can of the media, and we're going to add resuspension solution. The resuspension solution is in their fridge. It needs to be refrigerated. It already has the RNAs A mixed in with it, and we need to resuspend those cells in 200 microliters of what else? Resuspension solution. Remember that cells are pretty nailed down to the bottom, and uh, we can pour from the supernatant off pretty easily without losing the pellet. But I am going to set this pipette anywhere above 150 is fine. I have it at 170. I just want to have enough room to suck up what I can't pour off, okay? 
So I'm just going to pour this off as much as I can. And I actually let it sit for just a second and I'll go to the next one because there's, there's a fair amount of media that's still on the sides of the tube. Okay. Now you'll notice just letting it sit, some of that media collected down at the bottom. I thought I poured more than that. Anyway, I'm just going to select, uh, put the pipette tip away from the pellet as far as I can and just suck up as, as much as I can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but that's most of the media. Okay? This procedure is somewhat tolerant for having a little media in there. What I don't want to do is use the same tip, pull it out of here, then I'd contaminate my two bacterial preps with its neighbor. So I squirt that in the liquid there. And I am going to do that to all 16 of these. Oop, put it here. Don't put liquids in the trash as much as you can avoid it because particularly the media, it'll end up stinking after a while. Okay, so I have at least four there for demonstration purposes. I'm just going to raise this all the way up to 200. You'll notice as I was pipetting, you know, I wasn't lifting my thumb up all the way and filling it full to 200. I just needed to have excess um, room here to pull up any any amount up to 200 microliters of media from the uh, from those tubes. So I'm going to show you the process, then I'll finish all 16 here. This is the resuspension solution. Okay, I've added the RNAs to it, and I've mixed it. I have 200 microliters here. Now for this, if I touch the, t the tip to one of these tubes, well then I have to change the tip obviously, but I'm trying not to. So I'm just putting in the 200 microliters on top. Okay, I don't want to put this tip, this tip down in the bottle, down to the bottom. Don't need to do that. Because I don't want to get anywhere past this tip in that solution because up here on the pipette is not sterile. Close these four. And you notice on some of these trays there are those white scratch marks. <laughs> and that's from people doing this on these trays. And these trays are great for this. Um, one way to get the pellets back in the solution is to simply, you gotta drag the pellet across and you just want to be careful when you're dragging that you're not dragging in this direction so your thumb is going to open up the tube otherwise you'll splash yourself and this will get everywhere just holding it like this my three fingers and pointing it down and every time the tube goes across the tray it's flicking and hitting the next well but I just drag it across here and it just takes a couple drags and everything is back into solution where the cells are suspended in the resuspension system what I want to see is a nice milky uh, thing there. I don't want to see a pellet down at the bottom anymore. The cells are resuspended. Now we need to lyse the cells. Add 200 microliters of lysis solution. Okay, here's the lysis solution. We're going to add 200 microliters. And it says do not vortex. We just want to gently mix them upside down. What we're going to do is Add the 200 microliters. We're going to open all these tubes. You guys will probably be doing only two to four at once. Hopefully just one, right? That's all you may need for class. But once these have been added, then I'm simply going to close the lids, put this on top, invert six to eight times the, the two racks together, and that'll mix in the lysis solution with the resuspension in the cells and cause the DNA to come out of the cells or essentially the cell walls to break down and the plasmids to be let loose into the solution. Okay? 200 microliters. I'm done with the resuspension solution. That back so I don't get them confused. And here's the lysis solution. You guys are going to have a limited quota for the number of plasmid preps you can use and the number of ligation reactions you can do. Um, not so much for PCR reagents, but certainly for some of these other more expensive processes. You can see the cell starting to get clumpy, and there's a lysate in there. Yeah, see those cells breaking down? That's what we like to see. Got that closed, so I don't knock it over. I'm just going to invert. There's once, twice, three times, my lady. Four, eight, nine, okay, that's fine. Next, we neutralize. We have 350, 
Okay, so we add 350. Once again, I'm only trying to get the blue part into the solution here. You'll notice there's that little drip drop that's hanging at the end. I'm not too worried about getting that in or out, I just don't want to make, make a mess. Gently invert four to six times. pellet to cell debris. Now remember what I was saying, the plasma now is in solution, the cell debris is this gunky mass. What we want to do now is pellet all that cell debris to the bottom and what's going to be left in solution is plasma and nuclear DNA. Separate those two, that's what the column is for. You guys have seen me do this enough times. While that's spinning, it's going to spin for 10 minutes to pellet the cell debris. Now we're going to use that we have to prepare the gentle loop column. This is what's going to separate the plasma from the rest. So I need 16 of these. First I need the columns, and I also need the collection tubes. Okay? So I'm getting out enough collection tubes. Notice I'm pouring and I don't want to put back. Well, for the collection tubes, it's not that it's not crucial. Okay, this does what you think it does. It collects the reagents as they flow through the column. Finally, we loot the plasma that we want. It won't be into these collection tubes, it'll be into a regular sterile 1.7 mil tube. Again, you guys are going to be doing two to four plasma preps at any one time, and hopefully, that's all you have to do for the entire class. So, putting these in the tubes, this is preparing the column. Once I have all these columns in the collection tubes, then I need to add the column preparation solution. Notice that I'm using gloves to put my hands in these bags. Just seal it with the ziplock at the top to put it back in. Add column preparation solution. We add 500 microliters to each column. Spin for 30 seconds. Then we discard what comes through. It's just really hydrating this, hydrating the column. might seem odd, but we don't cap these. In fact, if you try, the caps won't fit. All we do is we put them in there and spin. We double check that that's true. Okay, yeah, that's true. We'll just spin them without capping. This is almost done. We're going to spin this for 30 seconds to a minute at full speed. Then um, we'll pull them out just like before we've done with the, with the gel kit, right? Kyogen, but this is a different vendor. We'll have our, we'll have the 500 microliters. will flow through the column, be in the bottom. I'm going to dump this out. Okay. After I dump this out, I put it back into the into the column. Then I'm going to add the lysate, meaning the top part, not the cell debris, but just the supernate coming out of here. I'm going to stick it on top of this column and let that flow through. I'm going to, we're going to spin these in a separate centrifuge. When you spin these columns with that column preparation solution. It has a, uh, it says to do it at greater than 12,000 G. I just wanted to point out that this dial right here is showing RPM right now. If I wanted to show gravity, or RCF is another word for that, I can push this button. It's at actually 14,000 G, where this is the RPMs. And the Gs are, the, are different depending on the centrifuge of the rotor, right? But the RPMs obviously are coming off the motor and are pretty we're going to spin these in a separate centrifuge just for a minute while these are getting down to the bottom. And for class, we're going to move this centrifuge so we have two of them in there. So, every, so hopefully it will be enough for everyone. We've labeled our tubes actually on the lid and we did end up closing the lids. Mostly I just want to see what will happen. <laughs> 